All right, so we're going to do some animating today. We have our storyboard sketch. We know that we want to, in my case, take a creature, show it transforming kind of into an erupting volcano, and then transform back. I have that outlined in nine kind of key steps with a beginning and middle and an end in mind. The setting will just be a white background. So what I need to do is think, what elements do I need to start collecting? What elements do I already have that will make up this story? So I have my creature assignment. He's nicely cut out. I can animate him just fine. What else do I need? I needed to start gathering some lava and smoke reference. So I've separated them into a few different folders. I'm just going to move all of those to the desktop for now. So I'll be using them a lot today. So for smoke, I found things like this. And I'm going to go ahead and make them nice and big within the view options of the finder so I can find smoke that I like. What's nice about GIF animations is they're not high resolution because they're made for online, so I don't need to worry about my sizes being huge. So this is the actual size, but that could work in, in the animation I'm doing because that's screen size anyway. I have a volcanic eruption. And I have lava flows. Now even though we're making our own GIF animations, you can be inspired by GIF animations that are already out there. And in a Google image search, to show you quickly, go to images. If I type in lava, and then I limit my search with search tools to being animated under type. They don't look like they're animated here, right? But then when I open them in a new tab, this will be all the GIF animations. Now just because they're a GIF file doesn't mean they're animated, but nowadays it usually does. So this is just Google showing you all of the, uh, the GIFs. Some people say GIF. The creator of the graphic interchange format says it's GIF, but I like GIF better. Now, when you save those and you open them up in preview, like this one, it will show as kind of a, a series of images. And what's nice about that is then you can steal any one of those images or any sequence of those images for your own animation. Okay. But we're going to learn how to make, make those for ourselves. So I have a combination of both images and animations, GIF files, in my reference. The next thing I need to do is I need to open up a new Photoshop file. This is what I did at the end of the last demo. And I did um, a file that is, I said file new, and I made it 8 inches by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. So that's the resolution of our animation. And it's a square, 8 by 8 by 150. And then I brought in my creature. And then on a new layer, we're going to do lots of new layers. I painted in this shadow. What's nice about separating out the layers is then I can do individual adjustments to them. Like so. And it's not going to affect my creature at all. Now, this folder, which is I'm calling the stage, this is what where we keep all of our assets. And it's like a puppet show. So my first asset is this shadow. My second asset is my creature. 
My third as asset is just a blank white background. And so you'll put all of your different kind of puppet show props in this folder. Okay, the next thing I might want to do is start to add some smoke, right? So I'm going to go to my lava and smoke reference and I'm going to start to pull just a little bit of smoke out like this little wisp here is very nice. I'm actually going to take this GIF file which is a, a sequence of, of smoke. Very pretty. It's actually quite a few frames. Let's see, 64 and counting. Just to show you what happens when you bring a GIF into a PSD. So it's 81 frames in all. That's a little uh, inefficient, but anyway. I'm going to take that, click and drag it on top of my image. It has a lot of images, so Photoshop has to process. Because I'm bringing it in, it's only going to take the first frame, right? So if I wanted to bring in more than one frame, I would have to open the GIF with Photoshop and see, like they did with this one, if they animated it within Photoshop with all of these different layers. And then if I wanted to steal any of those layers, I just swoop this out into its own window. And I can take as many layers as I want. In fact, I can take layer one through, whoops, whoops, <laughs> excuse me. I can take layer one through 80, 80 whatever, and bring them all into my my assets to use later. So what I'm going to do is just select them all, hold down shift, select all layers, and then drag and drop those layers onto my image. And now I have all 82 layers there for me to use. The problem is they all have this black background, so what am I going to do to all 82 of these layers? If I wanted to use them, I'm going to find a blending mode that works on a white background. So something like the screen mode would work really well. This next frame, change it to screen mode. If I turn multiples on and select them, as long as their eyeball is on, I can turn them all to screen mode. right? So it's all about saving time. So I'm actually going to turn them all on. There's probably a shortcut for turning them all on, but I don't know that. There's always more to learn in Photoshop. It's just a Google search away. And there are some capabilities they still have to improve upon for the next version of Photoshop. Right? But this project's going to teach us all about these kind of GIF animation tools. And there are plenty, and they're a lot of fun. So this is way too many frames. I don't want you to be adding 82 frames to something, but just to show you kind of something dramatic. This is how it works. Okay, now with all these ones that are showing, I select them all, I turn them all to, in this case, screen mode. And what it's showing you there is all of them layered up on top of each other. And that looks weird, right? Now when they're all selected, I can actually do a few other things, even though they're separate asset layers. I can move them all individually. So I can move them to start coming from where my kind of volcanic opening is. Let me make sure I got all of them, because it looks like one isn't moving. Ah, uh, yes, these bottom ones aren't. So let me select those, move those over. I'm going to turn off auto select there. So 
So this project will help us learn how to, to start using multiple layers together. And then also, I can take a whole batch of them and I can transform the whole batch of them. So this is all 82 layers. I could rotate them. I can control click and it won't let me warp or puppet warp but it will let me do things like skew and distort. So I'm going to skew it a little bit to make it kind of fit with my scene a little better. And widen it out. Kind of move everything up to about here. Okay. And just so you can see this very clearly, I'm going to give myself a new background. I'm going to add a, a new layer on top of my background. I'm going to fill it with black. And then I'm just going to run a really quick animation test, just so you kind of see how all of this works. Okay, so right now this looks weird. It's all built of different assets. And this is how we'll actually do animation. We're going to do it in our animation file, but just so you can kind of see what's coming. I go up to Window, all right, in CS6 and Creative Cloud, you're going to look for not the animation action, which is what it used to be called, but the timeline action, okay? And the timeline action, I'm going to swoop it out just so you can see it really clearly. We have two different options for viewing it. We can view it by a video timeline, which is based by timing, or we can do it by frame animation, and we want to do frame animation. Okay, and that shows it like this. And what I'm going to do is now use the options from the animation window, which are always in the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to say make frames from layers. This is just a quick animation test. And then I can set the timing on all those frames. So I can select all these frames, which are all linked to a different layer. And I like to use a, a basic timing of 0 0.03 seconds. That's kind of my standby default. And then I'm going to play it through forever. So if I play it through right now, you'll see what happens. So not what I want, because each frame is playing only one layer at a time. So this is where I program what shows up in certain frames. So for instance, in the first frame, I want, I'm going to turn on the eyeball. Basically, your frames here program the eyeballs on your layers. I'm going to turn on the black layer, and I'm going to turn on the shadow, and I'm going to turn on the creature in that first frame. And now, because it was the first frame, those are going to show up in every frame. So when I hit play, now it looks like that smoke is coming out of my creature's volcanic crater. But it looks a little weird that my creature is so still, but the smoke is there. But that's a good start. Okay. Now here's the, the most difficult thing about animating in Photoshop. Every frame is linked with this kind of program of the eyeball to each layer. So if I ever want to make a change to my layers, I have to first delete the frames. Because otherwise it's really easy to screw up that connection and the frames will undo the changes that I make in my layer, especially if it has to do with moving them around. So how do I delete frames, not layers? You don't hit delete. If I hit delete, it will delete all my layers. Instead, you drag them down to this little trash can until you get back down to just one frame in your timeline. Then I can nest my timeline back down there, which is a good place for it. So this is ass assets, assets of smoke, way more than I need. Now they double up on each other. And I'm going to move these first three to line up with the others. And now I'm ready for some other assets. <laughs> 